Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm back. I am Rosemary Campbell, a daughter of the living God. Yes, we have good conversation today. We're going to talk about who's bigger than and better than you, me, and a whole lot of things. Yes, we need to know that. We need to know that today. We need to know that every day. Yes, welcome to Morning Glory, where we talk about truth topics, the gospel and not gossip. Yes, so I'm going to get right into what we're going to talk about so that you guys can stay interested and stay hooked right there. Last time, you know, I was telling you about the uh, absolutes of God. There are some things about God that are only absolute to him. And what does absolute mean? Before we do that, let me give you my quote for today. Assurance. Now listen to this closely. Assurance in imperfection is absolute disappointment. Assurance in imperfection is absolute disappointment. And you're going to see how that's going to work out, uh, uh, how that's going to come to help us in our understanding today. Excuse me. So now let's think, since we're talking about some of the absolutes of God, some things are just privileged to God. Only he can do them. He stands, he stands alone in them. But it's some attributes and characteristics of God that he shared with us. And we will touch on one of those today. What is absolute? Absolute is something that is pure, that is perfect, and it's not dependent on anything else. So in our conversation today, we're going to be talking about God and the reason why we need that today. We need to have confidence in something that is pure, something that is perfect, and something that is not dependent on anything else. We need that today because as we see today, people are fickle. They change on you. The government changes on you. Leaders change on you, which are people, of course. But it's only one thing that does not change, and that is God. Matter of fact, that is one of God's attributes that stands along with him. First of all, he is eternal. God is eternal. We just I'm just going to do a brief recap from that. God is et- He is eternal. He is self-existing. He is unchangeable. Self-existing in that God doesn't need God doesn't need anything to exist. He's not dependent on anything to exist. He has life within himself. Uh, a scripture uh, is John 5:26. It says, For the Father have life in himself, so have he given to the Son to have life in himself. God is life, he is the Father of life. And God is unchangeable. God cannot change on us. We can't, we change, you know, we age, we change in our our appearance, we change in our uh, personalities, we change in a lot of things. God is immutable. It is impossible for him to change. The only thing God changes is he'll change in his mercy and his grace towards you. We thank you for that, Lord. God is, and that God stands alone in that, that God changes not. Man changes. Guess what? Man changes, but God is so faithful. He never changes. If you turn to God and repent, do you know God will, he will receive you. God will not only reprove you, but he will also receive you. God's change. So that speaks to God. God's love is unchanging. There's another thing. And God is eternal. God is eternal beginning and eternal end. It says in 1 Timothy 1.17, now unto the king eternal, immortal, invisible, the the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Eternity. It It is life without end. Eternal is is time without end. This is God. No one else can stand in that. That that is an absolute. That's only pure, perfect, and uh, only uh, dependent on God. I mean, it only applies toward God. He we don't share that. 
But he, uh, and then God is omnipresent. Let's talk about another attribute of God. Omnipresent. What does that mean? Omnipresent. God is everywhere, every time, all the time. He is present right now where I'm at. He's present right now where you are. God is present everywhere, but he is not in everything. When it tells us that when two or three are gathered in his name, there's what God is. It tells us that uh, when believers pray and worship and serve the Lord, there God is. His presence will come on in there. Everywhere where a person calls on the name of God, I don't care what place on the planet they're in, what ocean, sea, wherever they are, God it will be there to receive them. Yes. Yes. Larry is joining us. Thank you, Larry. Yes, God is everywhere, whoever calls on him. And guess what else, I mean, uh, beloved? God is every, he is present in the church. The church, God's church, you know, we, we think of a church as the building that the church that we go to. And it, that is, we can call it, that's a building. But God called us the church. Our, our temple is, our body is his temple. And when you receive God as your Lord and Savior, God's Holy Spirit comes and live on the inside of you. Yes, I love it. If you, I'm telling you, it is the best thing that ever happened in my life. It gave me strength. It gave me comfort. It gave me a sound mind. I know that I have the victory. Whatever the enemy brings against me, I have the victory. The truth will stand and a lie will always fall to the ground. So we thank God. Wherever the gospel is preached, God is there. Yes, he is. The Holy Spirit, when, when, uh, the Holy Spirit and Jesus, they work together. They're not divided. There's no dissension or no discord between them. Man's tradition and philosophy try to make it that way, but no, they work together. Wherever God's word is being preached, the Holy Spirit is there. It's convicting the people's heart of sin. It's, it's reproving them. It's also uh, it's convicting them of righteousness and judgment. God is everywhere all the time, but he is not in everything. He is omnipresent. I have a beautiful scripture I want to read. I was in my studies and I, and I uh, came across, well, not you know, I came across, but anyway. Let me share this beautiful scripture here. It's Psalms. It's talking about when I was reading, I mean, uh, Psalms 139. And you can see the omnipresence of God. It speaks about, we're going to read verses 7 through 20, I think it is. It says, where shall I go? From your spirit, and where shall I, where shall I flee from your presence, my Lord? If I if I ascend up to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take up wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost part of the sea, even there shall your hand lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light unto you. Even, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hide not from, the darkness hideth not from you, God. But the night shine of its day and the darkness and the light are both a light to God. That is God omnipresent. Look what, now, I wanted to touch on this one, verses 13 through 16, not 20. W watch this. It says, uh, let's see. For you have possessed my reins, my being, my inward parts. You have covered me in my mother's womb. Oh, in my mother's womb. That's telling us right there, beloved, that when a woman is pregnant, that is life. God has covered you in your mother's womb. It says, I will praise, I will praise you. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous is your works. That my soul know of this right well. My substance was not hid from you 
when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest part of the earth, when God, when we were being formed in our mother's womb, your eyes did see, but your eyes did see my substance. Yes, being unperfect. And in your book, all my members were written, which which in continuous were fashioned when as yet there was none of them before I came into existence. Life is in the womb and we don't want to take it. We don't want to take it. Now, if you have experienced abortion, and this is for you too, men, because you're guilty. Because anytime you encourage a woman to have an abortion or you ask her to have an abortion, then you are guilty of that blood. But God is good. Remember I said his, his love never changes. God will forgive you for that. Don't let the devil beat you up and just constantly condemn you and think and make you think that it is the unpardonable sin. It is not. God is ever. God is omnipresent. He is everywhere, but he is not in everything. He wasn't in things that things that people do that is against the word of God. God is not in that, but he do see. This is why God asked us to pray to pray for our government, to pray for people, to pray for your enemies, to pray for those who despitefully use you. Why does God ask us to pray, beloved? Because if we ask, if we be obedient and pray like God asked us to, guess what God is going to do? He's going to intervene in that situation. I'm telling you, he will. You don't have to fight. Remember, God said, vengeance is mine. I will repay. Be still and see the salvation of the Lord. Be still. God is so awesome. He is omnipresent. He is everywhere all the time. His love never changes. It, where two or three are gathered, he is there. When you worship and praise the Lord, he is there. If you want God to come, if you want to feel the presence of God in your home right now, just start praising him. Praising him. Lord, I praise you. I praise you for you are the creator, Lord. I praise you and I thank you, Father, for the breath of life that I'm breathing right now. I praise you. And for those that, even if even if those that are, let's say you haven't received the Lord as your savior, you can ask God to come into your heart and he will. I would enjoy to hear you uh, hear my people's comments on this. Join this conversation. Remember, I told you this is morning glory. This is a social table. I know you have something to say. So put your comments out there. I will give voice to them. Yes, I will. Yes, you have something to say on this subject about the omnipresence of God. He is everywhere. He is with you right now. He is with me. And especially when I proclaim his word, God's spirit comes and, and, and works in the heart of people and give people understanding in their mind. He is so good. That's God is omnipresent. Now, next time what we're talk about, we're going to talk about God, God being um, omnipotent. He is all powerful. Yes. I hope you all enjoyed that uh, scripture. I mean, uh, we're going to talk about God being all knowing. So those are some some other characteristics that we don't have. So look, God is bigger and he is bigger and better than me. He is bigger and better than you. He is bigger and better than that person, that man, that woman. He is bigger and better than the culture at your job. He is bigger and better than the culture in this world. Yes, let's pray for our world and let's pray for our nation. We don't want anarchy. We want God has established authority so that we can live a quiet and peaceful life. Don't buy that. Don't buy that. Why do we want to do it? We don't want to do away with the police. We want to do away with brutality. Because I'm going to tell you, beloved, if I have some trouble at my home or where maybe some people are trying to break in, I want to call the police. I can't call grandma. 
I want to call the established authority so they can come in and help me. Yes, yes. So let's not be silly out here. Black lives matter. Yes, they do. I'm black and my life matter. All lives matter. Yes, we, we want to be on that. We want to, we want to support and we want to make people aware that yes, we matter, but we don't want to be behind that hidden agenda of Black Lives Matter. And if you, if you don't know what I'm talking about, just go on blacklivesmatter.com and see what they say they stand for. We got to be careful of the devil. He's sneaky. He'll get his agenda in up under something that we are uh, standing for. So we got to be careful. So look, I'm going to let you all go. We right at our 15 minutes. So I just want to let you know that, listen, if you have any prayer requests, send them to morninggloryfyi at gmail.com. And remember next, oh, beautiful. Look, beautiful bracelet. Send me a good comment and you have that. Yes. And look, I just want you to remember next time you all join me. Give me some feedback on this word, uh, the message today. OK. And any other topics that you would like to hear. I'm thinking about going over to YouTube, uh, beloved. So, you know, you all let me know about that. Yes. Uh, let's see. And 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 listen, uh, let's see. I can't see her. Pamela is saying, and we need to matter to each other as well. She right. We need to matter to each other as well. You're right. And that, and we do matter. Let the people in your, in your um, world, your people in your family know that they matter. We have to just, just be kind to them. If you can't even say, I love you, just do an act of love until you can say it. Until you can learn other people's love language. So I love you, beloved. Thank you for joining me. I know I was missing in action for about a week, but uh, that's okay. I'm back. You know, I'm really busy, but it's okay. So I want you to remember until next time, beloved. Worry not. Pray a lot. Keep your mind locked. Giving praise and thanks to God, our peace and our rock. Love you. See you next time. And make sure you put your comments out there. Okay, God bless you.